All right, so we're, um, welcome back. We're continuing on with the example from last class. And uh, we had just, just to recap what we did on Monday, I started this example, um, a rolling wheel in between two parallel flat plates. And the, plat the flat plates or conveyor belts are sliding to the right in different directions, right? So we did, we did all of the velocity calculations at the end of last class. And then I said that I would save all the acceleration calculations for the start of this class. So let me just remind you of the scenario that we've painted for ourselves. Here we've got a wheel. It's in between these two plates. And the top um, conveyor belt is moving to the right, bottom conveyor belt moving to the left. So we know that the angular velocity of the wheel goes in this direction. So it was spinning in that particular direction. Right? But what I've noted is that it's actually, it's actually decelerating because the acceleration in the Q, uh, at point Q in this direction and the acceleration of point P in this direction for the plates, I specified it in the plates for the question, was in the opposite direction. So AQ was 7 meter per second squared to the right AP was 8 meter per second squared to the left. And so the acceleration of these two plates was doing that, which meant that for this particular wheel, those two points are actually accelerating with its tangential acceleration with these values. Okay? So now I've given, I've given you those numbers, and I've labeled them as APT and AQT to signify that we are now taking the conveyor belt information applying it to the wheel at the locations of P and Q, which now gives us that information as the tangential component. Okay? So wh wh where do we go from there? So we've still got lots of missing information. The goal is we need to find all of the accelerations at AP, AQ, AC, and AN. We note that we now have an omega. So from last class, let me see if I can find my omega. So our omega was 1.75 radians per second. And we noted that it was in this direction. But we still haven't found alpha yet. So we need alpha in order to complete all of the components of our acceleration. So how do we find alpha? So alpha, again, was from this, from this equation, right? As long as you know two tangential accelerations, because of the way that angular acceleration works, you can actually use it the same way that we did for the velocity calculation. You can do the following. Absolute value of an AP tangential minus an AQ tangential divided by RP with respect to Q. Right? If you did that, that actually enables you to find your alpha. And so our alpha calculation ends up being the following. AP, the P is going to the left. So you can say it's negative 8 minus Q. So that would be minus a plus 7. Right? So they're all moving in opposite directions. And then the distance between P and Q is 2 times the radius, which was 2 meters. So we therefore have 4 meters. And so the answer here is 3.75 radians per second squared, and it's going in this direction. That is now our alpha as determined by the two tangential accelerations. OK, so now we have an alpha. We've got the omega. And now we can start finding all the different accelerations at all the different points. right? OK, so of the four points, in order to first do anything, we need one reference point, right? No matter what you do with, with relative uh, uh, motion analysis. So I, if I do relative motion analysis, and so say I want to find AP, OK? Great. So your first thought is I should figure out what point I should refer to. So like an AC, perhaps, plus an AP with respect to C. 
And this AP with respect to C, we now know that we should split them up into a tangential and a normal component. Okay? But to do that, we first need to figure out what's the best reference point to have an acceleration. And we don't know any accelerations at any points. Right? So how do we, how do we go about that? Okay? So as it turns out, I'm going to go back to when we first talked about rolling wheels without slip. The rolling wheel without slip for the car situation that I talked about, when it was rolling down the, the street, you'll note that all the points were traveling in very complicated paths, but I always refer to one point, and that was the center of the wheel. The center of the wheel is your best friend, right? Because just think of the car and the axle through that wheel. This axle through that wheel, or any center point of a wheel, has to go in a horizontal direction. It has to be parallel to this surface. So the one thing we do know, even though we don't know the value of it yet, we do know that AC is definitely some value AC and only has an I component. And this is really, really helpful. Okay. So using that fact, what we're going to do now is I'm going to do a calculation for you that takes this idea of the alpha times r, giving you a tangential acceleration, and I'm actually going to be able to determine AC right away. Okay? So as it turns out, if you think about it, if I looked for a, a point where, you know, we've been talking about instantaneous center of zero velocity, and it works because we always have this point where the object rotates about it, and that point has no velocity on its own. Okay? And then a student asks the question, is there an instantaneous center for zero acceleration? And the answer is no. Okay? There is no point of instantaneous zero acceleration because even if you had one point that didn't have tangential acceleration, chances are it will have some normal acceleration. Or vice versa. It might have normal acceleration and not have tangential acceleration, right? So it could be one or the other. Um, so don't ever look for a point of zero uh, acceleration, OK? So that's my, that's my, first, that's my first thought. The, the other thing that I want to say is we can certainly use our tangential acceleration now to figure out this AC. Here's what I would do. You take your wheel. If this point right here is APT, so APT is equal to negative 8, or negative 8i, and this AQT is plus 7i, okay? What I can actually find is that if this is really rotating with an alpha, I can certainly find a point here where this is an alpha times r creating this tangential acceleration from a point of zero tangential acceleration. Not zero total acceleration, but zero tangential acceleration. And what you would expect is you would have a profile of tangential accelerations that just looks really similar to your profiles for velocities. Right? In fact, all of these points along this line should have a tangential acceleration around this, around this point. So I can find this point. Let me label this O. It's different than C. But I can certainly do the following now. I can say AP with respect to O must be alpha times RP with respect to O. Okay. And therefore, RP with respect to O if I rearrange those in just the magnitudes, it would be AP with respect to O divided by alpha. It would be 8 meters per second squared divided by my alpha, which is 3.75 second squared. And my RP with respect to O is therefore going to be Two point one three three meters. 
Okay, so this distance right here, 2.133 meters. Okay, and that's my C. Okay, so why did I do that? Once I've located the point where there is no tangential acceleration, I can now go back, refer to that point for C, and find AC. So using that point, now I would do the following. I would take I would take AC and its tangential, and I would make it equal to alpha times RC with respect to O. And therefore, it would be 3.75 multiplied by RC with respect to O is 2.133 minus my radius 2. And if I multiply that, I would get 0 0.5 meters per second squared. And now all I have to do is look at my diagram to realize that it's 0.5 meters per second squared, and it has to be moving to the left, given that it's above my point. So it's moving to the left. OK? Everyone with me so far? And not only that, but because this component for C is in the I component, and we know that C has to move horizontally. Here's the, here's the important point. C must move horizontally. So there's no other component. There's no J component at all to this acceleration. Therefore, AC, the complete acceleration, is just negative 0.5i meter per second squared total acceleration, everything. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions on that? OK, let me, let me do a quick recap. Point C, really, really important point, must move horizontally. I used information from P and Q, both in the horizontal direction, right, to, to figure out a special point for tangential acceleration, very similar to the IC for velocity, but only useful for the tangential acceleration. And by basically finding those distances, I found my AC. Okay, so that's my that's my trick. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so can you for something like this, can you achieve tangential acceleration? Would you just like for C or for any other point, would you just be able to calculate tangential acceleration by using this, or would you always be doing your own acceleration? Like for something like this, would you just work with tangential acceleration or uh, for No, so so we're not we're not done yet. You you cannot only do tangential and ignore normal. What I'm saying is I've been using tangential to help me find information I don't know. So for instance, that alpha, the alpha that I did not know, the only way you can find alpha, if you don't know it, is to use the tangential components. You're not allowed to use the normal components, right? And that's buried in all those cross product terms that I've showed you in the past. So, so I'm going to, let, let, let's, 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 um, let's get past this. Let's just say that we accept that AC must be this value. And let's check it with everything else that we have to solve. Okay? So let's accept that AC is negative 0.5i, and then I'm going to move on here. Let's do the APs and the AQs and the ANs. Okay? So if that's the case, and I do AN now, here's what AN would look like. You've got your one reference point AC. This allows me now to do everything I need. Right? So you do your relative motion analysis, AC is an with respect to c plus anc normal. So the tangential and the normal. OK, and here's what we know. Your end point is over here. So what do we know about tangential acceleration? Tangential acceleration better be in this direction, like that. Right, with respect to C. So this is my Rn with respect to C. This is tangential. 
So this would be my A and C T, right? Has to be positive J. And everything on the normal side of things, the normal acceleration, must be pointing towards the center back in the opposite direction of this R. So this would be my A and C N. OK, everyone understand that diagram? I basically used my relative motion analysis where my, my C is. I went this way for R. Tangential goes up because of my alpha going this way, count, uh, counterclockwise. And then normal direction pointing back towards C, right? Everything that we've talked about. So here's what we would have. We would have AC is our negative 5i that we just solved. We just figured that out. This must now be j component. And we know the value of it. The magnitude of it must be alpha times the distance, rn with respect to c. Okay? So now I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm going to try to do just my directions and magnitudes. Let's try to figure this out without any cross products. For those of you who like to look at things physically, I'm just going to include the unit vector here to say that we figured out the direction. And then here, what am I going to do? I'm going to point back towards the center. It's going to be negative i. So negative i like that. And it's going to be the omega squared value also times rnc. Did everyone follow the directions that I did there? OK. So if you did, then the final answer will be plus 3.75 to minus 1.75 squared times 2, like that. And we'll have a n plus 7.50 j. Let me do 6.6. OK? Any, any problems with that? No. OK, then we can move on to, so we now have ACAN. Let's do AP and AQ. So AP, AP is the following, right? AC plus AP with respect to C tangential plus AP with respect to C normal. All right, everyone agree with that? Then we're going to repeat. So follow along, it's negative 0.5i, right? And then I'm going to go back to this diagram. This diagram tells me the following. This is all still the relative motion, OK? Relative motion says wheel is going to go up this way with my alpha. My R, oops, sorry. My RC with respect to P is now this way. So this is my RP with respect to C. The wheel is accelerating this way, right? So tangential component over here. This is now my AP with respect to C tangential. And then AP with respect to N, straight down. AP with respect to C, N, like that. OK? So right angles and everything again. We know the following. This one must be pointing in the negative i, also with an alpha times r. So this is still going to be alpha rp with respect to c like that. And then plus, this one is going to go straight down. So that's a negative j. And it will be omega squared 
RP with respect to C. Look, all the numbers just keep popping up. It's the same magnitude over and over again. So I'll give you the answer. This one is now going to be negative 0.5 plus 3.752 negative i plus, so this will just be minus 1.75 squared 2j. So this is now negative 8.0i minus 6.13j. OK? And now you can see something, something happen here. I've combined my reference point AC, the one that we solved, and I noted that there was this, this 3.75 times 2 is a 7.5, right? The same 7.5 that was pointing positive J, now at the top of the wheel is pointing at negative I. The 7.5 added to the, neg to the 0.5 here gives me a negative 8. This negative 8 is the acceleration of the conveyor belt. Right? So this completely agrees with the physics of the problem now, right? The conveyor belt was moving at minus 8. We use that information to get our AC. AC became this, and it's because when we combine it back with other I terms, the negative 8 pops back up. OK? And then the J component is the, norm the normal acceleration. OK? So now, now what would you expect at AQ? Now that you know this, what do you think AQ is going to be just intuitively? What's that? Intuitively, yeah, intuitively, because the conveyor belt is plus 7, if I do my math correctly, I really should expect a plus 7 here, a plus 7i. And the arrow for normal acceleration points now upward. I would expect this to be a plus 6.13. So now, let's do a check to see if it agrees with everything. And so here's my AQ. AC plus AQ with respect to C tangential. AQ with respect to C normal. And sure enough, I'll just give you the answer. That is exactly what the answer is. You can confirm it on your own. But, but it, is, it is agreeing with our intuition. In fact, the AQ, the total acceleration, it matches the tangential part for the conveyor belt. How did I know it was plus 7? What do you mean, how do I know it's plus 7? So it was given to you. Conveyor belt moving at 7 meter per second square was given to you at the beginning of the problem. OK, and any questions on that? Lots of information there, but yeah. Is the normal acceleration the same for every point? And the answer is the same for every point relative to C on the outside rim of the circle. Why? Because omega squared r. right? So omega squared r, if you use the same r everywhere to the outside rim, right? and omega is the same for the whole wheel, omega squared r will be the same everywhere on this wheel. right? And what would the direction be? You would now know the direction. If I did a new point d, right? what do you know about this point? You first figure out your RD with respect to C points in this direction. This is your tangential acceleration. This is your normal. And the value, omega squared R. OK? But now you've got angles to deal with, right? OK. okay. So we got one more example to do today. See if I can squeeze this one in. I spent a lot of time on this wheel one because there's just a lot of information packed into it. 
Um, and you're going to keep seeing those, those types of problems. But my next one is going to be, let's get you guys to a linkage problem because you're going to see this in your homework assignments. This is going to be a multi-bar multi -bar linkage. Okay, and this multi-bar linkage looks like this. Let's see if I can draw this. Okay, so here, here's what we're dealing with. We're going to start seeing a lot of these types of problems. That, are you guys seeing these in your homework assignments yet? You are, right? And this is just a simple two-bar linkage. You probably are dealing with three and four-bar linkages at some point. We're going to start making sure that we're, we're really, really good and careful at labeling, labeling things. I'm going to call that point D, point B. This point right here is A. I'll do my x, y, positive rotation counterclockwise. Okay? And then what I do when I have multi-bar linkages is I make sure that I label my omegas with the letters omega BD for the linkage bar BD. And then I'm going to do omega here, subscripts AB for linkage bar AB. Okay, and the same for the alphas, right? Okay, so I'll give you all my distances. Length of bar DB is one meter. Length of bar BA is two meters. And some initial information, VA of the collar, 2.5 meters per second to the right. AA 4.0 meters per second square, also to the right. And you're asked to find the following. Find omega AB, omega BD, and the total acceleration of AB with respect to the reference frame. Okay, so where do, we, where do we start? So it looks to me like we've got, you know, ignore, ignore acceleration for a bit. Your, your first job is always deal with velocities because we need omegas to even do acceleration, right? So without a question, we need to use this VA to find all our omegas, right? So looking at this diagram, here's what you should, you should realize. Not only is VA given to you, so I'll rewrite that, 2.5i meters per second, right? Here are the other points that we know lots of information about. VD, we know VD is zero, obviously. What do we know about VB? What we know about VB is direction. So the direction is if this is my arm for the linkage and this doesn't move, this is a fixed point of rotation. This B has no choice but to move horizontally. So right away, direction of VB is known, and it must be in the I direction. Okay, So that's very, very useful. So I'm going to draw this diagram. I'm going to add some more things onto this diagram. I'm going to put my VA here. 
VA is forced to be a horizontal direction because the collar is running along this rail. So now you have a diagram which has a rigid body, two points A and B, and you have two velocity vectors where you can use them to find instantaneous center of zero velocity. Right? So here's what we're going to do. What do you do to find instantaneous center? If you wanted to, you draw your perpendicular lines, right? Perpendicular line, perpendicular line. What kind of scenario are we dealing with here? I'm dealing with a scenario where perpendicular lines are never going to intersect. What happened last time when I talked about that? There were two cases, right? One was it's impossible for this arrow and this arrow to have different magnitudes. Violates everything, right? So what's the only other option? Translation. Right? So just from that observation alone, I know that the entire linkage at that moment in time must be translating. Therefore, all the points are moving at 2.5 meters per second i. And the reason? Translation. Okay? Do you see the logic that I explained? Yeah, go ahead. Exactly, yeah, yeah, it's a great question, right? So here, like, like picture it, kind of try to visualize this, this linkage system. Imagine this bar starting in this position right here, right? You can imagine that this point's a little higher. It's kind of going in this arc, right? Like it's going to do a path that looks like this, right? So imagine this bar is initially like that. It's going to swing this way. And then by the time it gets over to this part of the arc, it's going to have to do this, right? So let me repeat that. It's going to do this. It's going to do thi uh, this and then that, right? So you see where I did there? There's actually an inflection point where it was initially swinging this way, and then it's forced to swing back the other way. Guess what it crossed? It crossed the moment when omega was equal to 0. Omega is equal to 0? Translation, right? So it's actually like if you visualize it, the rod is doing something continuously and pass through a moment where omega was 0. So let me repeat that. I used our instantaneous center method to determine that it was translating. And because it's translating, I immediately solve omega AB is 0. And I just explained to that student over there why that's the case. The rod was doing this, right? Swing here, stop. Swing back the other way, right? And you can, draw, you can draw this diagram at those different instances in time just to prove it to yourself, right? OK, so that helps a lot, because now we have omega AB, and the only thing left is to find omega BD. OK, so how do we find omega BD? Once you have information about this point and you have this omega, guess what? This B can always be approached from two directions, because it's connected to two bars. So if I rewrite that equation, VB is VB only in I, with respect to D, it is what? Omega BD times the length of BD. That's right. D is just the fixed point of rotation, omega times R gives you the velocity. So omega BD is just simple math where I take my 2.5 meter per second divided by the length of BD, which is 1 meter, and I get 2.5 radians per second. And the way it is swinging is this way. OK? All makes sense, yeah? How did you know that VB must be horizontal? How did I know VB must be horizontal? From point D. Point D, straight down. This is a radial vector going straight down. V is perpendicular to that. All right. So what else do we have? Acceleration, right? The final thing. So acceleration of B, the point that's sitting right there. Yeah. 
because I said that they, um, the perpendicular lines that I tried to draw, they basically have no chance of intersecting, so there is no instantaneous center of zero velocity. And then we conclude, therefore, that it must be translating. So it's a conclusion that it is translating. OK, so how do we approach AB? So first of all, we, we know nothing about any of their alphas. right? We only know their omegas. We don't know alphas. So it's very hard to figure out this point B. We need like a reference point. We need to find it with a relative to a known acceleration. So the information I gave you was actually acceleration at point A. The number I gave you was 4. So let me rewrite that. AA is 4 meters per second squared i. So that's useful. We're going to do AA plus AB with respect to A tangential plus AB with respect to A normal. OK? So it means that we now have to draw our diagrams and make sure that we have all the information we need. So here's our diagram. I think I have an angle here that I forgot to tell you about. This is 40. So add that to your diagram, please. Theta is equal to 40 degrees. So let me draw this with my 40 degree angle now. There's 40. And this is my A, and this is my B. OK, so if you look at this particular equation, here's what this means. We know that we can rely on point A to give us the translation component of that acceleration. So this is our AA. We know that from relative motion analysis, if I point my radial vector from A directly to B, then there is a tangential component that must look like this. That's my AB with respect to A tangential. Okay? Make sense? Because this is this is now, this is my, let me draw this again, this is my RBA, right? So alpha cross RBA, this is my tangential acceleration. Okay? And from my angles, I note that, let's get this right, this will be now 50 degrees, right there. Okay? And if that's tangential, then the normal direction must point back down into the opposite of RBA. So I'm going to draw this slightly offset here. But this is my pointing down A, B, A, N. OK? Everyone OK with that? So now I'm going to do, this is going to have to have a magnitude of alpha RBA. That's the magnitude, right? right? And now I can break it up into components. And I can do i's and j's, et cetera. OK, so the way we're going to do this is it should look like the following. A, B, unknown is A, A, I. And then I'm going to start adding my component parts. The first part is alpha of my link A, B times R, B, A. Okay, so that's my magnitude. And then now I'm going to break it up into I's and J's. I is going to be a cosine 50 I plus alpha AB RBA sine 50J. OK? And then I take my normal acceleration, and I do it again. So now I'm going to add, and it's going to be omega AB squared times RB with respect to A. And it's going to be i, but it'll be now cosine 40 i. All right? And then it's negative j, so it'll be minus omega ab squared rb with respect to a sine 
40J, all right? So there you have it. I have, I, I do, I'm doing this right now with magnitudes, looking at my diagram, getting directions, breaking them up into components. Everything is now in I and J, okay? One simplification, what happened to omega AB again? Translating, right? Zero. Okay, so you didn't have to write that. That is my acceleration for B. What are my unknowns? My unknown is still, I have no idea where to find alpha AB in this case. So this is an unknown, and this is an unknown. I'm still missing an equation. What else can I do? So when you're missing an equation and you've got a two-bar linkage, what do you do? You come at point B from the opposite direction, right? So this equation was relative to A. What does it look like when I go relative to B, right? And they should, they should match. It has to match. So AB, therefore, can be arrived at from the top. AD plus AD with respect to BT plus AD with respect to BN, OK? And we know a few things already. AD is 0, because that's a fixed point. And now I can draw another diagram. My other diagram is going to look like this. It's going to be my linkage bar straight down. And I'm going to assume alpha BD goes this way. Just assume it because your signs will fix itself. Here's where my ATs and ANs are, okay? This is a straight bar coming down vertically. So my R, B with respect to D, oops, sorry, this is B with respect to D, B with respect to D. Okay, so B with respect to D is straight down, therefore my A, B, D, T, 90 degrees, and then my A, B, D, N, straight up. Like that. Okay? Same, same idea, right? I need my radial vector, and then I just go perpendicular and parallel. So what should my A, B be from the D direction? going to now be an alpha BD times R B with respect to D. And tangential says this is all I. Right. And then this is going to be omega BD squared, R B with respect to D, and then straight up positive J. Okay, now you've got two equations in two unknowns. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to equate it to this. Okay, they have to be equal to each other, and the two unknowns become the two alphas. And you can solve the alphas if you just make sure that the i's and j's are the same. Okay, so we're going to equate the two relationships for A, B, equate I and J components separately. Okay, and you will see the following. It'll be AA plus the other I component like that. Like that. Alpha A B R B A sine fifty 
is equal to omega bd squared. Okay, and there you have it. I'll give you the solution. So therefore, alpha AB, for you to check at home, And then the answer that we were looking for from the question was what AB was. Okay, so there's your final answer. Any, any questions on that? Okay, you're going to see a lot of these, and, and, and here's the thing, you're going to probably see some three bar linkages eventually, right? You'll see something maybe like that, and the same principles apply. A lot of the times, these are the ones that we want, but the information is buried. You can't find it. Where do you, how do you get at them? You start from points that you know, so the fixed points of rotation give you hints. You approach these points from those two sides. Make them equal to each other because they have to be equal to each other. Okay? All right. That's it. I'll see you guys Friday.